This is the Khmer Times News. My name is Paolo Bonini, and these are your headlines. Bird flu claims yet another victim. Pharmacists are warned to be much more ethical. And a Lamborghini driver kills an innocent motorist, then tries to flee. And believe me, that is a story you do not want to miss. But firstly, our headline story, and it is not good news, as bird flu has a new victim. It has been announced that a 17-year-old girl in Campot has caught the deadly H5N1 virus. The girl, who was confirmed positive for bird flu, had been suffering from a high fever and had difficulty in breathing. She still is receiving intensive treatment from doctors. And yet again, all the warning signs were there. When questioned, it was discovered that seven chickens had died mysteriously at her home. But tragically, the family took no action at all. That was until the girl fell gravely ill. The emergency response team of the Ministry of Health are investigating this latest outbreak. Now, globally, the situation is much worse, and I mean worryingly bad. To reference this, let's have a look at the USA, for they are the most recent and precise statistics that we have at hand. And what we see is nearly 82 million birds have been affected. And for that number to make any sense, you need to remember that bird flu is deadlier than the Black Death, with a 65% mortality rate whereas the jolly old Black Death is only 47%. So if you get bird flu, you are more likely to die. And although 140 million birds have been culled globally, this deadly disease has now struck in five continents in 67 different countries. And if its continued march across the globe is not enough, this is what the WHO has recently said. But before I read their statement, keep in mind 140 million birds have already been culled. And remember, the death rate in humans is 65%. And the only reason we don't have more human deaths is the virus at current does not spread easily to mammals. So, when the WHO said the following, many have become gravely concerned. For what the WHO have said is, recently there have been increasing reports of deadly outbreaks amongst mammals. In fact, 10 countries across three continents have reported outbreaks in mammals, and there are likely to be more countries where outbreaks have not yet been reported. Both land and sea mammals have been affected, including outbreaks in farmed mink in Spain, seals in America, and even sea lions in Peru and Chile, with at least 26 species known to have been affected. And the deadly virus has also been detected in domestic animals, such as cats and dogs. Now, I ain't trying to scare anyone. But if this virus continues along the road it is traveling, successfully bridging the gap to infect mammals, the scenario is one that belongs in the Book of Revelations. And I am no religious man, I assure you of that. But if the pale horse of pestilence should take hold, you will see this not religious man on his knees praying. For we are going to need all the help we can get. On this week's Crime Desk, yet another drunk driver kills and runs. Two senior policemen in a Western-style gun showdown, and a man tries to steal a piece of the Mekong River to make it his own.
There was quite a lot of crime this week to report, but by far this story stood out head and shoulders above the rest. Let me firstly show you a photo. This is a BMW. It was a car that two Chinese men tried to escape in after killing an innocent man. But this was no normal murder, for they had killed him with a Lamborghini. Yes, a Lamborghini owned by a Chinese influencer who makes shows about cooking, has caused the death of an innocent driver, a man who was simply heading home to his family late one evening. It was, in fact, one o'clock in the morning one dark night when the high-performance sports car driven dangerously careered into a motto killing its driver. The two men in the Lamborghini then tried to flee the scene in that BMW. They did not stop to offer any aid to the wounded man. They did not stop to call for an ambulance that may have saved the man's life. They left him bleeding on the tarmac, and they allowed the man to die where he lay. That's pretty bad, isn't it? It can't get any worse, can it? Well, yes, it can. As it seems that now it was not the owner of the car that was driving, no, not at all. Rather, fortunately for the owner of this wildly expensive car, his chauffeur was driving. But guess what? When breath tested, it turns out that the purported chauffeur was drunk. I don't know what to say, as all of this is so very sickening. So I will tell you a story. My brother-in-law is a billionaire. He honestly is. His name is John Goodman, and he inherited over $1 billion when his father died. Now you're thinking, wow, it must be great to have a billion dollars. Well, here is a photo of my brother-in-law, John. This is his mugshot. And in this next photo, here he is being led off to jail. So why was a man of such unbelievable wealth jailed? Well, it's because John killed a man with his Bentley when drunk. And John is now in jail for an awful long time. And that is exactly what should happen here. Despite John's wealth and privilege, the law acted with the anger that the public demanded. And he was sent to jail for 15 long years. People here are no less outraged that this man left an innocent dying man in the road and did nothing to help him. The public and the dead man's family are crying out for justice to be served. So all are accountable to the law, privileged or otherwise. Trouble at the top this week as a deputy governor and a district police inspector have been detained by local police and interrogated after an incident that almost saw them shoot one another. In the style of a Western movie, I suppose. The two senior officials are currently under investigation after they brandished firearms at each other during a heated argument. And it has been reported the only thing that stopped them from shooting one another was they were physically restrained. The two men who should have known an awful lot better were quite incredibly the governor of a district in Mondulkiri province and the deputy commander of the exact same district. The two senior men now have to answer questions about how a dispute led to the pair waving firearms at each other, not only endangering themselves, but everybody around them. It seems a dispute had been simmering for many weeks and now was ready to explode in gunfire. Once the two men met, firearms were produced 
and the men were had to be prevented from firing shots at each other. And that was stated by the district inspector, who himself witnessed the whole incident, and luckily he was the voice of reason. Otherwise, this could easily be a case for murder. It is now understood that peace has broken out, and those two senior officers, it is hoped, have learnt their lesson to be somewhat more responsible and, of course, set a much better example. Here is our last story on our crime desk, and I do adore these quirky stories that come across my desk. Who could forget the man who was bitten by a venomous snake? So he punched it to death, put it in his pocket, and calmly walked to the nearest hospital to get treated. Well, this next story is not quite as cool, but it is as quirky. A man has quite incredibly tried to steal some of the Mekong River. <clears throat> Yes, a man loved one part of the river that was near his house so much he fenced it off by building a dam. Kampong Cham provincial authorities have said that they have taken immediate action against Mr. Tung, who tried to take possession of part of the Mekong River. The dam he built was over 130 metres long but was planned to be an incredible 300 metres long. And that is a whole load of work for one man. Mr Tan has now been made to sign a contract, and the first clause in that contract unsurprisingly states he is to stop putting any more rocks in the river. Poor old Mr Tong, all that hard labour for absolutely nothing. And we finish this week with a huge burst of colour and light. As it was the puppet parade hurrah, in Siem Rip this week, and I went along to capture some footage so you can see what ancient creatures stalked the streets of old Siem Rip town earlier this week. And believe me when I tell you, it really was impressive. And here we are at the Puppet Parade. And have a look at that. An enormous pterodactyl. And you've got to love it, haven't you? Because you've got to consider that the streets in Siem Rip are rather narrow. But the committee that met that night, they said, what shall we do for the puppet parade? So they said, how about the largest winged animal that has ever walked on Earth? And do you know what? They actually pulled it off. And directly behind it is a very imaginatively coloured Stegosaurus. And it's absolutely glorious, isn't it? And it, it brings into mind there something that I've always thought is... In books, they always colour dinosaurs mute greys and browns and greens when they could have been bright yellow or they could have been pink, as we see here. We will never, ever know. And it's one of those mysteries that has lost to time and shall never be answered. But as we look further down the street, what do we have here? Oh my goodness! It's a pink Diplodocus, I believe. And you've got to remember that these were all made by children, just using bits of wire and paper and, of course, a whole load of time. So you can see them celebrating and dancing in the streets. I'm proud to show off their work, and so they should be. Have a look at the scale. They are enormous. And a lot of Westerners and tourists came out to see them. But the one thing that they did say to me was... They were very surprised that this um, event wasn't better promoted. Um, and it is a shame because it truly was the most splendid of nights out. Have a look at that. Isn't it incredible? It's time to have a look ahead and see what the weather has in store for us next week. So did you like that, the jolly old puppet parade? It's rather good, isn't it? I don't know how long it's been going on for. Um, I've seen it for three years. Um, and before that, I was drunk for over a decade. And I mean blind drunk, so I didn't 
see anything? <laughs> so the three years I've been sober, they've been having the puppet parade. And what else do I see? Well, I see weather before me. And um, what we've got, we've got highs um, peaking towards the 30s. Humidity, wow, that's at 74, 75%, only a gentle wind. But there will be a break in humidity when we hit Wednesday, as potentially there'll be a burst of rain. And I think that's all you're going to get is just a burst and then forget about it. So it's clouds, it's sun, but the big word starts with H, humidity. This has been the Khmer Times News. Please do subscribe and comment and stay up to date with all the breaking news by following us on both Facebook and Telegram. This has been Paolo Bonini, and that was the week that was. I'll see you next weekend for your weekly roundup.